Spheres of Expansion. The rise of the Tau can be seen to develop through five distinct phases. Periods of intense growth known to them as Spheres of Expansion. Each of these ways of interstellar colonization is marked by a long building up of resources, after which continual waves of exploratory missions are launched, followed where needed by military campaigns to solidify territorial gains. Once a colony transforms itself into a stable settlement, it then serves as a jumping off point for the next expansion. By the end of the millennia-long First Sphere expansion as it later came to be called, the Tau Empire had unfurled across the heavens and consisted of 80 full settled and exploited star systems known as Sets. Named after its primary or Sept world, a Sept can include any number of additionally colonized planets or moons in the same system, as well as other holdings such as listening posts, sensor fields, shield satellites, orbital cities, fortress stations, and mining operations. Everything is connected, both by a series of void stations and a massive net of communications and sensor relays strung between major locations within the system. Although it might take many generations to establish itself, each Tau Sept is unique, with its own cultural nuances and varying proportions of the different castes and non-Tau alien populations. Tau Septs Each Tau Sept, as a fully settled Tau star system is known, has its own unique cultural identity but remains wholly integrated within the greater Tao culture. This cultural identity seems to mainly derive from which Tao caste is more numerous and influential in the given sept. Currently, there are over 20 fully developed septs within the Tao Empire. Each one has its own sept icon or badge which serves as a national identifier of sorts for other Tau within the Empire. The First Sphere Expansion Sets The First Sphere Expansion of the Tau Empire began shortly after their species first achieved spaceflight capabilities. The Tau homeworld and the First Sphere colonies are of major economic and political importance to them, and form the hub of their empire. First we have Tau'un, the first Tau sept established in the empire's history. Tau'un has a chain of enormous orbital docks and controls the largest of the air cast void stations. Every sept hosts warships of the Tau Protection Fleet, or Korvatra, but none can boast of more than Tau'un. Then Dianoi, named after the twin moons of its prime sept world, Dianoi has survived long isolation due to a space storm of fierce and unnatural qualities. It has also seen many infamous orc invasions, having been isolated for such a long period of time from the Tau Empire, its inhabitants are considered somewhat rustic and backwards. Then Bork An. The Sept of Bork An is a center of Tau learning and academia, and its star system has many rich mining planets. Borkan has a high percentage of earth cars in its population, and fire warriors from here are not infrequently outfitted with prototype weapons and support equipment. Then Dal Eith. Dal Eith Sept was ravaged by the Imperium during the Damocles Crusade. Many of its outer colonies and several cities on its prime Sept world were destroyed. 
It has recovered quickly thanks to its busy trade ports. Large numbers of aliens can be seen here alongside its famously efficient water cast merchants and diplomats. Then Fal Shia. Many technological innovations have come from this sept. Firecast warriors from Fal Shia are often the first to try out prototype weapons, armor, and system upgrades. Then Viorla. The planet Viorla orbits a binary star, and its name translates as hot blooded in low Gothic. It is known to produce especially aggressive and skilled warriors. Many orc invasions have been broken by the Sept, and the most respected Firecast Academies reside upon it. And the last one, Sakea. The Sept's prime Sept world of Sakea is the hottest and most densely populated of all Tau worlds, producing more colonization fleets during the Second Sphere expansion than any other. Warriors of Sakea are regarded as particularly honorable by other Tau. The Second Sphere Expansion Sets The Second Sphere Expansion of the Tau Empire began in 18M39, under the orders of Ethereal Supreme Aun Vei of the Whispered Wisdom. With new advances in propulsion technology and an already established interstellar empire, the second phase expansion was marked by more contact with aliens and larger wars. Around 742 M41, the Tau Empire first came into conflict with the xenophobic Human Imperium which launched the Damocles Gulf Crusade in order to keep the Tau's expansion into Imperial controlled space in check. The retreat of Imperial forces from their space marked the end of the Second Sphere expansion. Of note are the Septs established by the Firecast Commander Farsight during this period. First we have Autal. Autal Prime is a verdant and beautiful sept world where only honored Tau heroes can retire. Then Nedras. For reasons known only to the Ethereals, this once thriving sept has largely been abandoned. Its remaining inhabitants are regarded as untrustworthy, quick tempered, and of a brooding countenance. Then Kelshan, situated near the Perdus Rift, this sept has suffered many invasions and is less trusting of aliens than other Tau. The Kelshan Tau protection fleet and firecast forces have only recently been restored back to full strength after their clashes with High Fleet Gorgon. Tau from this sept have grown mistrustful, solemn, taciturn, unfriendly, and sometimes openly hostile to alien races as a result of their experience with the Tyranids. Then El Siair. El Siair is a densely populated sept with many moons orbiting its prime sept world most of which are mined for the valuable ores used in the construction of battle suits. This sept is known for its poetry and artwork. Its citizens are considered intellectuals and well respected for their creativeness by other Tau. The Earth Cars is dominant on El Siair. Then Tashvar, a frontier sept. The Tau of Tashvar have been subjected to frequent orc invasions and pirate raids. As a result, its people have become tenacious and hardy. Then Vashia, known as the world between spheres. This sept was settled near the end of the second sphere expansion. 
as it took a long period for the Earth cast machines to make the air breathable. Major air cast fleets and many orbital defense platforms are docked around the system sept world. And the last one, Te'olku. Te'olku is known for its many large ethereal temples, as well as the alien institutes where many alien ambassadors are brought to be instructed in the ways of Tao culture, society, and the greater good before being assimilated back into their respective homeworld societies. Now, for the third and final known expansion. The Third Sphere Expansion Sets The Third Sphere Expansion was begun by the Tau Empire in 977 M41 on the world of the ethereal supreme Aun Va. The Firecast Commander Shadow Sun was placed in command of the expansion and secured at least two new sets for the Tau Empire. During the Zeist campaign of circa 999 M41, Imperial Space Marine forces counterattacked against the Third Sphere expansion, seemingly drawing it to a halt. However, by this time, the Tau Empire had grown to 133% of its size prior to 997M41, largely as a result of the Imperium's distraction during the 13th Black Crusade and its aftermath in circa 999M41. After the withdrawal of Imperial forces from the campaign, the third expansion continued until it ended following the disastrous second Agrellan campaign of the same year and increased resistance from the Imperium, which led to the assassination of the Ethereal Supreme, Aun Va. Given the stated size increase of the Tao Empire during this early period, the Third Sphere includes many more septs currently unknown to Imperial scholars. I will now name the recognized septs, starting off with Kasim Yen, the first of a handful of new septs found in the Third Sphere expansion. Kasim Yen is one of the many worlds previously claimed by the Imperium. Those human inhabitants who swore fealty to the greater good have been resettled deeper into the Tao Empire to assure their safety and their proper assimilation into the Empire. The Tao colonists of this sept seem to be associated with luck, subtlety, and opportunistic subterfuge. Then, Phi Rios. The Tao occupying the prime sept world of this sept wrested it from the grip of an orc warlord, and cleansing the star system has proven quite costly. Phi Rios is a sept whose air and earth cast pioneers are recognized by the wider empire for a tenacious refusal to accept defeat, tempered by a stoic acceptance of the price all must pay in the furtherance of the greater good. And the last one, Mugulath Bay. Mugulath Bay was formerly the imperial hive world known as Agrelan, that was the gateway to the Dovar system. It was the site of a famous Tau victory at the Battle of Mugulath Bay, a victory won by both Commander Shadow Sun and Ethereal Supreme Aun Va, which had marked the high point of the Third Sphere expansion. After this victory, Mugulath Bay was well on its way to being established as a full-fledged sept. However, shortly after the Prefectia campaign, the Imperium launched a major counterattack against it, determined to reclaim it. 
In the end, the Tau managed to resist, but the Imperium subjected the planet to an exterminatus action and destroyed it. A small minority of Mugulath Bay's Tau population managed to survive the planetary firestorm unleashed by the Exterminatus thanks to an energy shield dome that was erected by the Earth cast around a single Tau city, Lovash Tau. The survivors were faced with the unsettling truth that they might never be able to travel back to the Tau Empire as their world was now surrounded by Imperial forces. Mugulath Bay ultimately had to be abandoned as the entire Damocles Gulf was set ablaze by the Imperial counteroffensive, which effectively separated Imperial space from the Tau Empire. Surviving elements from Mugulath Bay then attempted to flee to the nearby Far Sight Enclaves, but were set upon by Commander Shaw Strike on the order of the Ethereals, who were determined that the Far Sight Enclaves should not see their strength grow. Shaw Strike managed to destroy most of the Rebel Tower, but some still managed to escape.